Hello, on today's episode of Ask the Gunsmith, um, we are going to stir up a little controversy. Um, we are going to compare the 500 Smith & Wesson to the 4570 and show you why the 500 Smith & Wesson out of our rifle uh, is actually a hotter, more powerful cartridge than the 4570, um, no matter how it's loaded. So, um, first point. Velocities listed on the cartridge box for 500 Smith & Wesson are typically a, tested out of a 6 or 8 inch barrel. They are not tested out of an 18 inch rifle barrel like a, we're obviously producing. Um, when you shoot factory ammo or reloads out of an 18 inch barrel, you can increase your velocity with a 500 Smith & Wesson by 200 to upwards of 600 foot per second depending on the load and the details and stuff like that. We have chronograph data from a, a factory loaded double tap uh, 400 grain hard cast through one of our 22 inch barreled uh, models uh, pushing 2275 foot per second for velocity um, which is considerably warmer than you're going to get a 400 hard cast to go um, out of a Marlin or out of a 4570 in a Marlin. Um, that load generates 4,592 foot-pounds of energy. Um, it is a factory load. It is a safe load we have pushed through our guns. Um, <clears throat> I've been loading for 4570 Marlins for uh, almost 25 years now, and there is no way you are going to push a 400 grain cast to 2,200 foot per second or anywhere close to that. Um, my tip, I have an 18 inch barrel on my personal rifle. Um, I'm typically getting about 1800 foot per second um, loaded safely and on the loaded safely uh, point a 4570 case was designed in the 1860s it was not designed for the pressures that the uh, 500 Smith & Wesson case is um, there's a lot of mildly conflicting data when it comes to everybody's different uh, books and pressures and did they test them or did they copy and paste them from somebody else's manual but on a simple line a Ruger number one which is the strongest 4570 out there um, that one maxes out at about 50,000 um, for pressure not because the Ruger number one can't handle anymore but more because the 4570 case cannot handle anymore. It, 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 you will max out what the case can, can do. And because of that, if you're pushing 4570 brass that hard, you're going to get a very short case life. For, uh, 500 Smith & Wesson has a much longer brass life. You can get, uh, we oftentimes get 10 to 12 loads, um, running normal loads through our, our 500 Smith. Um, <clears throat> we've, in our initial design phase, we've, seen what happens when you push a Marlin, well, model 1895, past um, where the books usually max out. And I, there's some data anywhere from 29, 32,000. The difference between CUP, which is the old copper units of pressure, which a lot of data is rated in copper units of pressure, which is kind of an inaccurate old way to measure, versus PSI, which is what most modern cartridge data is pushed out in. Um, there's some discrepancy between those. There is not 25,000 of discrepancy, so there is no way you're gonna, you know, a, a 500 Smith & Wesson operates it up to 62 to 65,000 uh, PSI safely, no problems with it. There is no way to get a 4570 safely to that kind of pressure. You will, you will break your gun. Uh, at Marlin, we, we did when we were designing ours. Um, we set the headspace back 10 thousandths which is a pretty astronomical number for your gun to to uh, open up. We've bent them. Um, I've seen other people that have pushed there or, or had mistakes in reloading, and they've actually cracked the barrel shank where it goes through the receiver. So uh, the Marlin design cannot handle 65,000. That is why they have never put a 500 Smith & Wesson in a Marlin, and that is why they don't put any cartridges that have 60 to 65,000 PSI in, uh, into that gun. Um, also, I'm going to bring up the point of recoil. Um, I've been shooting a lot of 4570 out of the Marlin 1895, and 
it is not pleasant. Um, I, we are going to bring out another video that will we'll chronograph some guns side by side. And we'll also slow down some high speed video so that you can see just how much harder the Marlin kicks versus the stock design on our gun. Um, we started with a basic 1886 Winchester design, but it's modified. The comb is raised. Um, your recoil forces drive in a straighter line, which keeps your comb from slapping you in the cheek. Um, I can tell you, I have punched myself in the nose while hunting. You get excited. You're, uh, you're not really paying attention to how you're holding the gun. I punched myself in the nose, I've scoped myself with Marlins. They are not a pleasant gun to shoot. Um, on power factor, the 500 is hotter, you know, not just for pressure, but we can get a bullet going, the same sized bullet going faster, um, which due to physics, same size bullet going faster is going to be more powerful. Uh, the measurement standard used for a lot of big bore, fa uh, big bore cartridges is the Taylor knockout factor or Taylor KO. Um, 500 Smith & Wesson, your optimum loads are going to be about 65.1. Um, your hottest loads for a 4570 out of a Ruger is going to be about 55.6. Your hottest loads you're going to be able to safely push out of a Marlin is about 48.4. And, and the Taylor knockout factor is your bullet mass, your grains of your bullet, your muzzle velocity, and your bullet diameter, your frontal diameter. Uh, divided over 7,000 in order to reduce that down to a manageable number. Um, so it basically gives the momentum and the knockdown factor of that bullet. Um, pure foot-pounds of energy is pretty misleading. Um, if you delve into that, uh, you can get a tiny little cartridge with really high foot-pounds of energy, but there's no way that you're going to want to shoot anything big with a 22-250. So in the future, we are going to do chronograph between the 4570 and the 500 Smith. Um, we're gonna do some penetration tests. We are going to stir some things up because I know comparing anything to the very uh, storied 4570 is going to ruffle feathers. So um, feel free to uh, give us a comment or uh, watch for the next video. We have a downloadable sheet where we also compare anywhere from a 223 on up to a 50 BMG. Um, with our cartridge and and velocities knockout factors power factors stuff like that this is available at our website so you can download that and feel free to check that out as well thank you have a nice day